hey family welcome back to the channel it's good to have you guys back here to the channel so in today's tutorial we are going to be recreating a six thousand and one hundred what is it called dollar bag it's a lady deal bag we're going to be recreating it using an agara fabric and um a leather fabric so the dimensions i am using is a 8 by 6.5 for the actual body and I have two and I cut out um, four inches by eight inches for the bottom and I cut out a 6.5 inches sorry um, yeah 6.5 inches by four inches for the side then I went ahead and removed half inches from one end of the side from one top of the side so I and I made a slant to get this uh, effect that you're seeing on the slant. So I went ahead and coated um, my fabric. I'm using a two-faced leather to coat the Ankara fabric. This is because the Ankara fabric was light. So I decided to use a two-faced leather to make my coat. You could use a foam and you could also use a two-faced leather and you could also use a marco depending on the one you have at your disposal so i went ahead and make the coat as you can see the coats i made were just crosses and then double straight lines so this is just me using my gum to gum one end of the of the uh, of the body that's one that that is where it's going to be the top and this is me I am putting a I'm putting my gum on the bottom side of the of the of the two-faced leather so that I'll use it to wrap the color of leather I want this also you could use a marco or a carry board depending on what you have at your this so I am just arranging it nicely then I'll just go ahead and put my gum on the edges and I will fold it in so I'm just going to put my gum on the edges then I'll fold it in thank you guys for tuning into the channel once again if you are a returning subscriber thank you for always coming back to the channel i love you and god bless you and if you're just tuning into the channel for the very first time please do well to click on the subscribe button and also the notification bell so that you get notified whenever we post a new tutorial because on this channel we have many more amazing tutorials to show you guys honestly me personally i am a fashion freak if you say bag i am dear if you say shoes i will appear if you say gown or anything related to fashion i will run as fast as i can so if you are like me who is a fashion lover, who is a bag lover, who loves to create things with, with your hands, then this channel is for you. Please click the subscribe button and also the notification bell. Join the family and let's grow together. So this is just me folding in the two edges very nicely with my gum then the next thing i'm going to go ahead and do now is to now put it on top this other one as you can see this is how it's going to look like so make sure you are putting it exactly close to the um close to the where the stabilizer start from you are not overlaying it you are just putting it at the edge at the edge you're not overlaying it you're just putting it at the edge of where the uh, stabilizer stops so when you stitch this is what it looks like so you see this is what i mean so you see that i did not overlap it i just lay it close to each other so after doing that the next thing i'm going to go ahead and do now is to you know use uh, my pen to just mark straight lines um one inches from the edge and them um, half inches from the edge one inches from the edge edge then half inches from the other edge <laughs> so that i'll be able to put in my bag stand and um, because the bag has, has to have a bag stand because of the of the actual bag we are recreating you know we are recreating a very very expensive bag <laughs> So there are different type of back stand, but this back stand that I have is just this simple one that you just push through and you just open it up like this. There's a back stand that, that has screw, depending on the back stand that you're using, Shabo. I like this one because it's easy to work with and it is also very, very easy to 
maneuver so when i am done putting my back stand this is what it um looks like the next thing i'm going to go ahead and do now is to put gum on the side of the bag so that i'll just go ahead and fold in the edges remember we just fold in one path um so now we are going to be putting our gum so that we'll fold in the remaining um two sides go yes we will fold in the remaining two sides please guys if you are enjoying this tutorial please don't forget to give me a thumbs up i really appreciate it and also don't forget to say something nice in the comment section if you have any questions so far please feel free to put it in the comment section i am here for you the same way i know that you guys are here for me so please take your time and fold in the edges nicely because this is going to be the body of the bag so you need it to be as nice as as nice and neat as possible as you can see i am doing it multiple times yes it's because i don't want any lumps or any rumple so when i was done this is what it looks like the next thing i'm going to go ahead and do now is to start cutting the inner part so this is like a gum walk this is like a gum walk so this is a cardboard paper i am using that is popularly known as chipboard so i am just using it to you know measure out the um the overall width of the bag like this of the main body of the bag so when you do that you go ahead and remove um 0.2 inches or 0.3 inches so because this is something i've done over time i know <laughs> what i would remove that will work out so i removed it on one side like this and i removed it on the other side so i removed it vertically and horizontally so when i was done i went ahead and just keep that aside and this is me trying to um go trying to cut out the handle of the bag so i have a dedicated video for this and um i am going to put the link in the description box so that you'll be able to watch it and see how i went about to get the circular handle i don't want to be explaining it here because this video is already too long so after i was done with all the cutting the wrapping the stitching this is what it looks like i went ahead and put in my eyelets off camera in case you don't know how to put your eyelet manually without an eyelet machine i have a video i am going to put that link as well in the description box of where i made one of my best seller tote bags i explain how i manually put my um eyelet so after i put my eyelet as you can see it is neat you will not even know that i did not use a machine you see it is neat and it doesn't have any lumps so after i was done with that this is what it looks like the next thing i'm going to go ahead and do is to just keep that aside so after i went ahead i wrap my um my inner part my um cardboard paper that i want to use as my chipboard this is what it looks like i went ahead and sew the body of the bag all round so i also went ahead and put my lining off camera if you notice the lining is shorter than the main fabric you get why <laughs> so i'll just go ahead and just give this a top stitch top stitch it this way and also top stitch the side then i will also top stitch this um um it's going to serve as the inner cover so it is a four inches thin by five inches you could you know you could omit it and you could put it but i just didn't want the bag to have a a opening like you just open the bag and you see everything that is inside you know this one that i am putting is something that serves as a cover that is go going to be holding the the fastener yes it's called magnetic though so i've just go ahead and arrange it and just sew it and when i was done sewing this is what it looks like and this is what everything looks like now it's time to do our actual gum work and the reason why i left um i made the lining smaller is because when i want to gum it like this it will be easy to maneuver please apply your gum generously because it is a 50 percent gum work so you need to apply your gum generously so after you apply your gum generously you arrange it nicely this way 
please make sure you are using that lining as a guide please make sure you're using that lining as a guide i did it over and over again to act to get the shape so when i was done with one side i went ahead and did the same thing for the second side like i said apply gum generously please make sure you are applying gum only on the extension you don't get any business with the lining <laughs> i speak broken for you guys so when i was done as you can see our box shape is already in place yes i realized it was floppy so i had to remove that side so you see our box shape is in place i went ahead and cut off the excess bottom and then um, now it's time to join the bodies together so please start from the top then you you know arrange it nicely take your time please it took me a very very long time take your time because you don't want it to be bigger than each other in one place so please take your time take your time arrange it nicely you don't want it to be bent please take your time and make sure you apply gum generously so when i was done i went ahead to my sewing machine and just give it a round stitch so that it will stay in place so i used the handle as a guide to you know open open the holes like this and i went ahead and added some uh, other eyelets i went ahead and added the extension of the um of the fastener of camera you could do that even without my guidance of course i have a video on how to make a tassel you could watch that and um, this is just the final touches i went ahead of course to make the long strap so you could put this um you could put round rings but i just decided to give my work a special kind of touch so this is just me putting a chain to hold the um the tassel that i made then i decided to use a strap a same color leather strap to um hold the up handle to the body together so just keep watching you understand what i mean honestly this bag at the end of the day came out lovely came out even more beautiful than i than expected and i loved it so when i was done putting the start this is what it looks like so i just went ahead to start coupling the bodies together so these are the round rings i was talking about but i just decided to omit it and use a strap instead I use a strap to just you know tie it and hold it together and honestly it came out beautiful and it was giving a unique look it was giving a unique look but you could just omit this my drama and use those round rings for you know to quit quit stress so i just tied it nicely and i tied it again and honestly i loved the way it came out my life <laughs> So I tied it nicely. I went ahead and did the same thing for the remaining three parts. I made sure it was over it, on top it, not at the side or inside. So when I was done, this is what it looks like. I went ahead and put the final touches, which is uh, adding my logo. Adding my logo to the bag. And then um, that is like basically everything about this tutorial, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning into the channel once again. I hope you learned something from this tutorial. I hope uh, to see you again. Please share my tutorials with your family and friends. And see you guys in my next one. Bye for now. I love you guys. Bye.